So what I'm going to show you is how I might start painting this suet pine cone that's hanging on the tree there that we put for the birds. And um, this is a branch here still of the Korean spice viburnum. That's the name of this tree that this bird is sitting in. It's a beautiful, beautiful little bush in the uh, in the spring. It smells just gorgeous. Korean spice viburnum. And then my friend made this little suet suet um, pine cone with suet in it, and she made, put put a little acorn head and a ribbon on top of there. But you can't really see it very well. But the birds were attracted to it. Some of you are just leaving the painting like this. You're not bothering putting that in. That's fine. But if you did want to put that in, how would you go about it? Well, let's give it a try and we'll see, see what I might do here. I'm going to start seeing the underlying colors of everything. So this here is a very much of a, a blue, a dark blue black area. It's very blue, very, very blue. So I'm going to be making sure I put some blue slashes underneath there and I can darken that later or alter it later. But I'm going to put blue there. When I squint my eyes, I see a lot of darks, but I see some bright yellows and some oranges in here. Because I see a lot of yellow in this painting, when I see darks quite often, I'm going to see purples. This, uh, this here is a, a golden color under here. So I'm going to put some gold here. This is also it's just a very neutral like light here. I'm going to just start putting some colors, dabbing them in. And I know this is my foundation. So it's just going to give life to, to the painting underneath. And so I'm just going to take the colors that I have here. And I see this yellow. I'm going to make a little bit of an orange for this head up here. I've got to find where I drew that face. Ooh, maybe I want to make sure I have that ribbon nice and neat. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. So I kind of get, got to, if I want this to be a very bright highlight, I have to make sure I know where it is. So I can see, I'm going to draw it in for myself again. I'm going to draw this better. It's not, it's just been scribbled in. Uh, hmm. This is here, the face is here. And then this comes down. There's a, there's a shape there that I really want to make sure, sure I get. And the pine cone comes out here, up here and around. Just want to get track of where that little, I know it's an acorn. Nobody else will need to know it's an acorn. I guess I need to erase a bit too. Let's see, this comes down to here. I think I gotta bring this back up a bit. I do like that highlight up there. So I'm gonna make sure I, I keep it. Okay, so I am just going to come behind here and start putting some orange and I've got this messy palette over here. I don't know if you can see it. I might move my camera a little bit this way so you can see it better. I'm going to pull in some of this brown that I've got here by mixing the blue, red and yellow that I had on my palette. I kind of like that color for the acorn. I'm going to add a bit more yellow maybe. I'm just going to put, I'm just going to start to to put some of this beautiful orange color underneath there where that acorn will be. I'm not worrying that it's perfect, but I do want that lovely orange color to be, to be important. I'm going to just dab in some different colors. I don't want it to be all one color. I don't care. This is just my foundation. I know I'm going to be making it black and dark later. I know that all my darks will cover all of these lights just fine. I'm going to put some red in there. 
really make it twinkle. I know that I can influence it later to, I'm gonna put some more red. I'm gonna pull some of this neutral here that I have and put a bit more red in there. And I'm gonna put that color on, on the side of the face here. I just feel like darkening it right away, but I'm gonna exaggerate the colors of the neutrals. So these are neutrals, they look very brown. Eventually I, I could decide to make them browner, but um, right now I'm trying to just to see the colors underneath the colors, the bright colors underneath the colors. And I know that I can, I'll be influencing this. You won't see any of this once I'm finished. This is just a foundation. I'm gonna take a smaller brush and just maybe um, take some paper towel and dry my brush off just a bit. I'm just gonna play a little bit in here just to soften those lines. I'm just gonna influence this a bit more. I'm gonna just bring these colors over here. They won't, I won't even really see them at the end. They'll just be glowing through to help this area remain vibrant. I'm just gonna take this clean brush here that I was blending with and I'm just gonna, it's a smaller brush. I'm gonna put some of these colors here in this, I'll scoop up some more water. And I just put some yellow underneath there. I see it's yellow, it's not the right yellow. I don't worry, I'm gonna maybe add some of this neutral orange in here. Give it a flavor of just some texture. Put some more colors here, I'm gonna get some more yellow. I see this, it's really white right here, but it's a bit yellowy. And I can tell that there's probably some white here, some white in here, but there's the shape, it's very light. Actually, now I'm gonna to start to paint some of this yellow here, a bit brownie yellow. Just get some colors in. I can see there's a green tinge in there. I'm gonna, I could affect it by just adding a bit of dirty green here. I call it dirty because it's neutralized already on my palette. I'm just going for the general color blue so that I could just add it on here. So that I've got yellow here when I put the blue, the dirty blue, I'm, it's sort of a purpley blue almost. I can see that it's neutralizing it beautifully and I'm just gonna put that on there, get it, start to build up this golden violet dark that I'm gonna be putting here. I'm just doing some, some sections. Um, but really I'm jumping all over the place here when I'm doing these little demos for you because it's whatever you ask me to show you about I'm doing it. But ideally you might've wanted to put the background in here first too. So I'm gonna make a, a neutral color. It's sort of a purpley blue. I'm gonna add a bit of this dirty yellow orange here just to, whoops. Yeah, I still want it to be bluer than that. So now I'm gonna make it bluer there. I like that color. I'm going to start to, you could have tested it first to see if it's good. I kind of, I'm just happy with what I know it's going to be. I'm going to start to put this color in the background too. I should have maybe used a bigger brush, but I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to get another brush because I do think I should use a bigger brush to pull this down quicker. I'm just going to take that color and pull it down. Um, I'm going to get this color, my brush here. I know I want it to be a little bit hard edge, but there's a, it's it's not a it's a kind of a soft edge, but not too too soft. So if you want to blend this like wet into wet, like if this is wet and it's going to blend, I don't mind too much. I can tighten it up later if I want to. I'm just getting some background color in here, just to start helping me describe these pine cones. They do need to have their background around there for me too. I like to get some paint everywhere before I make any big decisions on finishing anything. Some painters like to finish one thing, then move to another. I'm gonna teach the way my teachers taught me and that would have been to, to get something everywhere. You're painting the whole composition. 
you're not just painting one object, you're thinking about the whole composition. And even though I didn't worry that this color was exactly the same as this color, I'm, it's working just fine. It, it's, it's in the ballpark. And as I build it up, it will be more and more accurate. So I had been to put some, some light color there before. I'm just gonna start to make this a little darker. Am I not worrying that it's exactly the right color right now because my next coat, if I want this to be bluer, I just add, I put a wash of blue right over the whole thing. So you can put the wash at the beginning of a color that you want, or you can put a wash at the end. And this is a very soft focus uh, branch right here. I'm painting it very hard line. I'm gonna make sure this is soft. So I'm gonna put, I took my, just scooped up some water and put water all over everything. This whole area is, has got to blend with no hard edges. You see, it's very, very soft. It's much darker than I have it, but I'm gonna build it up. And maybe I'll decide never to make it as dark as it is in the photo. And maybe I will uh, decide later. So this is something that I could have my artistic license and make those decisions later. I'm going to now put some of that orange, that yellowy orange back into this, this area here that's got this streak. It's a brown, part of the brownness of the fence in the background. It's a bit too yellow. Um, again, I do think this whole thing is going to be much darker. There, that's better. It's more completely neutralized. Although I'm seeing it as yellow, I don't really want it to look yellow. I, I want it to look brown. So I'm gonna just be neutralizing my yellows with purples and my blues with oranges so that I can get these beautiful neutralized colors. I'm gonna get another brush and a clean brush and just put some water over here so that I can make a nice soft transition over to here. Scoop lots of water up and then slowly work. And then I'm knitting so I don't get a hard edge there. I'm knitting with the water here. And then later I'm going to, right now it's a hard edge around here, but it's gonna eventually be a soft edge. I'm gonna put that color right in there now. I can see it's, it's all nice and yellow in there. I could start to just put yellow right across here. I'm being a bit careless. I think some of you would work a lot slower and methodically and neater. And I might too, if I wasn't demonstrating, um, I would be much less um, careless. But in a way, I just want to show you how careless I can be so that you're not afraid to just put something down and know that you're gonna make it better later. That's something I just want to really stress. Once you understand your color mixing, you're never stuck with any, any one decision that you've made because it's just a, about layering. See, I'm making this bluer now, still wet. I can play in it for a certain amount of time as long as it's wet. Okay, I don't know how long that's been, but that might, that might give you a bit of an insight into how to start doing this side of the painting. Bringing this all up, it's going to be much darker later. We'll see. We'll see if it'll get darker later. This whole thing, oh yeah, I've got a bit of a hard line happening here. So I'm going to take my water, my dirty water. I'm going to pull it over to that corner. And I was, oops, I had a blue on that brush. That'll weave just fine. I thought it was a clean, clear brush. But I don't really mind because this whole painting is built on neutrals. 